Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Powder of Podcast. I promise you this guys if you listen to this or if you hear me out for the next 30 seconds if you pay close attention and if you love stories you're going to really love this podcast. This is the Powder of Podcast. My name is Varun Painter. We are available on YouTube as video. We are also available as audio on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast and probably all the other podcast platforms that we have in the country. Who I have with me is Vijay Thomas who is the marketing lead for Harley Davidson India. Vijay um Vijay has been a man who's uh, who I have ridden with both in the country as well as internationally and which is a great guy um, he's a good storyteller as well and <laughs> you are here primarily to tell primarily to tell us stories about how motorcycling started and stuff like that but you got back from a ride in Spain how was that mate uh yeah but first of all thank you for having me um, i think this is a great platform been watching a lot of your podcasts and i think you guys are doing a great job thank you and yeah spain amazing uh, i mean always love to ride in spain um, yeah. fabulous roads the weather is great the food's great yeah. uh but this time i think what made spain extra special is the fact that we held uh, a hill climb challenge mm-hmm. and believe it or not uh, amongst the uh, 100 odd media members from across the world who had come down our boy hmm. vijay singh from uh, rajputana custom put together the fastest ever time 6.8 seconds now you know once you understand it wasn't just a climb all the way straight up a hill it right. was uh, Uh, it was not a very long climb but you know you had to get out of a rut uh, go over a little hump do a sort of a lean into the right and then finally you before you hit almost the end of the climb uh, there is a sharp left and the finish line is there so it's pretty technical yeah. uh, so it's 6.8 seconds of intense burst you know you yeah. don't really have the time to relax yeah. uh, that's what made that uh, particular ride um, exceptionally good yeah so like people say it's just full gas all the time so this was essentially full gas all the time full gas all the time but you got to use your mind, mind too, yeah, you know because uh, it's it's if you if you were on the gas all the time you'd probably be over the hill <laughs> somewhere else you know you, it was technical yeah. um <clears throat> the second best time was 7.7.1 yeah. seconds but the average was between 8 and 9 seconds so that that just shows what yeah. what kind of skill levels that one needs in fact we were watching this one episode in power of like you know on a computer with 10 people watching this yeah. it was some hill climb happening in europe somewhere yeah, in yeah. europe yeah. where they were bringing in dirt motorcycles yeah, yeah. but with an extended Correct. wheel base and Correct. they had tractor Correct. tires on yeah, it yeah. and they had to climb a really yeah, steep yeah, hill yeah. really yeah. steep so much fun to watch yeah because think about it no but why why do you need such a long wheel base because when you're going uphill the one thing that you don't want to happen is your front end going up yeah. the last place that you want to pull a wheelie right. is <laughs> when you're going uphill especially on a steep hill you know by what you're having a much longer wheel base it sort of compensates for the front lifting up yeah. but interesting that you say this you know one has to understand what is the genesis of the sport um it, I, i'd love to follow the history of motorcycles and yeah. uh, if you ask me yeah. um there are three stages of sort of the evolution of motorcycles you've got the first stage which is the pre formative years uh, i would say it's probably between the early 1900s all the way to about the mid 1940s and you've got the formative years which is 1945 to 55 and then the transformative years which is 55 and uh, ahead uh, each of these stages uh, there was a specific or a multiple specific instances that sort of created this entire subculture now um, we are all familiar with motorcyclists right yeah. but you'd see if you observe motorcycling you'd understand that there are two distinct categories i'd like to call it the red category and the black category uh, but is there the, like an official name to this uh, i don't know i mean uh, almost a decade in in this space you know yeah. one tends to make theories of your theories own of, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> red and of, black we yeah, call yeah, it red and black red and black some of, some of this is is observation that that i've had uh, right. some is what i've read um so who is the red category person i'd i'd like to imagine that the red category person is somebody who sees motorcycling as an absolute sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, for him it's an extension of his personality. For him it's the fact that when I sit on this bike how fast can I go? Mm-hmm. You know, how can I do a lap in a certain time? How do I better it? Uh look at his motorcycle. His motorcycle is designed for the sport. It's aerodynamic. Horsepower is the name of the game. Um if you look at the black category person, he sees motorcycles more as a social part of his personality. uh he sees it as a lifestyle uh it's the community it's the tribe it's the fact that you're in a pack um if when you look at the motorcycles that the black category person owns style plays a big role right fit function the second third performance would be the last and the final part 
the red category person it's exactly the opposite mm-hmm. performance plays the most important the most important role. okay fit and function very important style maybe not as much because yeah. you know the most stylish motorcycles are probably not the fastest yeah. and, but i uh, think style for him as well is going to be more functioning function, or yeah it, it's more function right e- exactly right. so it doesn't have to be pleasing to the eye yeah. you know we there are some if i say so you know some not so very good looking motorcycles but yeah. they are so fast yeah <laughs> aerodynamic, aerodynamic and, and so on and so forth So yeah these are the two different categories of uh, motorcycle riding um, or rather personalities two, yeah personalities now both the categories evolved the red category evolved into racing different kinds of racing the black category evolved into motorcycle riding culture uh if we talk about the black let's between you know the early fif- the first 50 odd years it was kind of slow but one has to understand where did motorcycles come from mm-hmm. and there are multiple answers to that question you know i don't think anyone can pinpoint and say that motorcycles came from this particular place uh, because it didn't happen it wasn't a bubble that just burst it was like yeah. a lot of little 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 bubbles that were sort of popping up all across the world mm-hmm. but my favorite story is um the the velodromes was a big sport people used to cycle i mean you're familiar with the velodrome yep. right it's a it's an olympic sport so yep. you know you you've got this lovely wooden f- a uh, close loop close yeah, loop and yeah. you know you got these cyclists with really fat thick strong yeah. legs <laughs> gunning it trunk legs exactly, exactly call yeah. it that yeah but the point is if you're familiar with cyclists you know that there comes a point that you can't go any faster because wind drag becomes your biggest enemy yep uh so they they reached a time when timings sort of started plateauing uh-huh. and one couldn't just go faster so someone came up with an idea saying that listen why don't we take a, put a motor on a cycle like a rudimentary basic motor that can probably go a little faster than the fastest guy around so they were, you know your early engineers engineered a little <laughs> motor put that on a standard cycle and uh, got this guy to ride in front so the the phenomenon uh, called drafting which we all we are familiar i mean if you're a motor gp uh, follow you'd notice that on the long straight if you're right behind the fastest guy the slipstream gives you that bit of an advantage yep. right so s- same thing similar, similar theory similar yeah. theory so <laughs> so this particular early motorcycle sort of led the pack and people noticed that the entire pack, pack started getting faster uh, over time the sport became more popular because more cyclists were beginning to go faster and somebody had the smart idea to why if you can do it inside the velodrome why don't we do it outside yep and that i think it's a very romantic way of, of imagining how motorcycles came a cycle motor motorcycles yeah uh, so for the first uh, 50 years of um, uh, the, the last century very basic motorcycles you know not not very highly technical like the way we have today but there was a massive bubble mm-hmm. uh, tons of different motorcycle manufacturers came into being now towards the end of this era the preformative years the world wars happened now one should understand that there was a time when horses hmm. were part of the infantry right but in in our generation there no one's no one's on a horse anymore the motorcycle became the horse you know people were riding motorcycles in 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 the wars now when the great wars got over let's talk about the us when the mm-hmm. great wars got over most of the the veterans came back and they were trying to get back to normal life yep um you know you've seen the horrors of war yep. and you can't expect the person to go and do a 9 to 5 job after that uh, most of them suffered from post traumatic stress syndrome ptsd, PTSD yeah. yeah and eventually they'll drop out they couldn't work but of course you should understand that you know by virtue of them serving or doing multiple tours they did have a bit of pension or some right. money and uh, some of these motorcycles which they rode during the war were available in army surplus one yeah. of them was the WLA which was a, a famous Harley Davidson motorcycle right so they they buy these motorcycles and they start riding eventually i'd like you to imagine this you know you 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 see this veteran who rides up tries to fill gas and he sees another guy coming on a, a similar motorcycle but then let's remember it's not exactly the same bike it's completely chopped off all the parts that were needed yeah. for the war you don't need it for civilian yeah, life right so some of the bobber culture came yeah. from these oh, chop shops that yeah, got rid yeah, of yeah. all the parts right. um so they'll end up you know uh, riding in on your bobber again where did the term bobber come yeah. you know, a bobber comes from the fact that most of us are familiar with a bob haircut yeah, you know yeah, yeah. where the you chop the chop yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the back of your hair sort of has a little bit of a duck tail yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 the point i mean you see these motorcycles you see that the rear fender is chopped off uh, probably a little bend of the back yeah single seat single seat yeah. yeah so they they two of these guys arrive at a gas station and they look at each other they're both wearing dog tags and the first question they ask is you know where did you tour hmm. he says this particular this is where are you going hmm. um, there hmm. <laughs> where's there i don't know wherever the road takes me okay and looks back and says, what, what about you me too there uh-huh. says you want to ride together sure why not uh-huh. so 
two of them started riding together a couple of days later i probably at a diner they see another two guys looking very similar as them uh, they pop up and uh, four of them look at each other and they realize that they 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 all Where are they from the same day? club so it, it two became four four becomes eight and eventually they become a unit mm. and uh, like in the army each one of them had a rank right so eventually the highest ranking person amongst that group became the president of that particular group and you know that's how the early motorcycle right. riding clubs right. uh, severely influenced and inspired by uh, by the army rules and right. regulations so the formative years that i'm talking about for 45 to say 55 tons of these riding clubs started popping, s- up, popping yeah. up across the, the united states and um, one should understand that towns welcomed them because a biker who has money in his pocket when you go to a town you spend that money right it's good for the town's of economy course, yeah, yeah. so so a lot of these towns started having their own festivals so oh. in 1947 um, in during the independence week uh, 4th of july weekend a little town near california uh, called holitsa mm-hmm. did something called the gypsies tour i mean they they keep doing it every year but uh, for a couple of years it was canceled because of the war but then okay. there was like the the resurgence of the festival right the gypsies yeah. tour the gypsy tour tour okay yeah. it's a combination of flat track races hill climbs good fun it's a motorcycle yeah. festival i mean we're all familiar with what happens in a motorcycle yeah. festival now one has to understand that this particular town has about 4000 people living there uh-huh. and more than the population of that town Your bikers bikers. descended. Oh wow. Okay and the town couldn't just take it but they were they would they didn't mind it because it's yeah. great for the economy. Of course. Uh but as we see in any other bike festival there was 4000 bikers coming down they you know <laughs> they have fun. Yeah. So there was this particular photographer from the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh-huh. who landed up and he was having this conversation with the bartender and and he actually landed a few days after the festival. So there were not many bikers left. I asked him you know how how was the festival like I said yeah it was good I mean yeah you know as usual there was a little bit of yeah indiscipline <laughs> but not nothing too major so the gentleman after he finishes his drink he goes out and he sees this guy bike uh, hanging around and he takes a picture mm-hmm. now I'm going to describe the picture to you the gentleman who sat on that motorcycle is called Eddie Davenport mm. and the picture if you could find it online I mean if you google uh, the whole itsa incident you'd find it uh, he's sitting on this motorcycle with like at least 50 beer bottles around him he's got a beer bottle in his hand he's leaning back he takes this picture to this day nobody knows whether it was a staged picture or a true picture i mean there are two sides of that argument but nevertheless that picture was taken but for some reason that the chronicle the san francisco chronicle didn't print that picture okay that picture was then sent uh, to the other side of the us um the west coast i mean sorry the east, east coast, coast yeah the east coast and Life magazine printed it. Okay. And like it was like a photo feature. Uh-huh. 80% of the the page was this picture and the uh, caption goes something like watch out this man's going to terrorize you or something Bad like that. Bad boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that that was sort of the caption, you know. Now in a regular folk when you see a picture like that it scares you, right? Because you you see this guy with a lot of beer bottles. He, he, the whole bad boy image yeah. came into being. Um I wasn't good for the sport. I mean there were regular folks who were part of motorcycle clubs who who did 9 to 5 jobs, uh, yeah. law abiding citizens and then they're all you know you paint everybody with the same brush. And yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. So that was sort of the first uh, nail uh, in in that coffin. Later on in 1953 uh, this uh, famous director called Stanley Kramer uh-huh. was just looking for inspiration to make a movie. and he apparently chanced upon this particular photograph which is about 8 years old yeah. in, in in a very old copy of the life magazine and he sees this picture and gets tremendously inspired he goes on to make a movie with Marlon Brando in the lead called the wild ones uh-huh. and um, it's it's a story about a bunch of bikers riding into a town and terrorizing the town yeah <laughs> doom in 1950 so, yeah. <laughs> something like that <laughs> <laughs> but um, by the time the movie came out and if you see Marlon Brando's attire you know he's got a beret cap he's got this black jacket blue jeans black boots yeah i can imagine i can actually picture yeah. Marlon Brando yeah yeah right but now. imagine a, imagine a rider today it's the same look and feel you know yeah. it's, it, it's these little things that sort of capture the imagination of yeah. of the riders then and even future riders yeah but between these two unique um, inc- incidents the tag of motorcyclists all being bad boys sort of became the norm the norm yeah uh, a, a lot of the riding clubs pushed back 
and uh, the american motorcycle association again this is unconfirmed but uh, if you're a, a student of history you'd be keen to read about it uh, apparently there is a story that the american motorcycle association appealed to everybody saying that listen there are rules that we have to follow we shouldn't be painting really? so, yeah 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 and uh, 99% of all riding clubs rode back saying that yeah we are in line we we don't want this bad name to be on us yeah. and uh, apparently one person said i mean i can't say this on shoot the finger <laughs> the <bike>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they, they rode back a, a not so nice email yeah. uh, email <laughs> <laughs> not so nice got so used to seeing these yeah. using these words you know yeah. yeah so not not so nice letter went back so apparently there was a a, a conference in which the president of the AMA made a statement saying that 99% of all motorcycle clubs are with us one percentage of them are outlaws that is in a way you know this outlaw motorcycle culture the term came outlaws picture, came yeah. from that statement even some of them went on to make a uh, a symbol with the mm-hmm. diamond and there's a one and a percentage sign after that and they used to wear it proudly saying that we are part of that one percent ah nice so uh, uh, a lot of the outlaw clubs that at least we are familiar with which mm-hmm. were back in the 70s and the 80s i mean you know you know you can name these outlaw clubs most of them wore the one percent uh, symbol the very badge, proudly yeah So in in many ways the 45 50 47 53 incident that was the, the the formative years and then the transformative years is when a dime a dozen motorcycle not um, I think hundreds of motorcycle clubs started sprouting across the country and uh, yeah and and they started riding and they generally had fun today if you look at a rider on a sunday morning when you wear your leathers when you sit on a motorcycle and you see a bunch of your friends around you I'd like to believe that the same feeling that you exp- or rather the same feeling that our forefathers experienced the feeling of strength mm. the feeling of power yeah. the feeling of the fact that we are greater than the sum total of each individual mm-hmm. is the same feeling that we get on a sunday morning you can't deny it so in, in many ways instances like this in our history has inspired who we are or right. a- as motorcycle riders who we are today Now that's pretty much the whole black category story. Now if you go to the red category the the front, fast category. Yeah. The only truth in life is that the second you me everybody in this room was conceived was because of a race. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah of course yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yeah. I mean that one sperm that won the race yeah is what brought us all out. I mean our life was created so that is in our dna the fact that we have to go fast the fact that when you see another guy next to you you need to beat him whether you like <laughs> it or not you need to be ahead of him it is a truth of life so as far as racing goes you know when the first motorcycle was created the next day they raced it it's oh, it's, yep. it's a fact uh, so in the early days what what were the kind of racing uh, there was board racing uh, imagine board racing i mean i don't know how they even made it the massive motor domes yeah the flooring was made out of wood okay literally actually panels of wood laid one after the other and and these are a mile long you know in a massive oval yeah wow and the spectators were literally 6 feet above them so you, you look down and you see these bunch of riders just gunning for it yeah. and and you're seeing it like you know you can you can probably extend your arm and you can touch them Oh, uh, was it safe? Hell no. <laughs> Because, you know, they they all riding fast and you you do something wrong, you can crash into the crowd. Or worse, if you crash, most of the time what the nurses were doing or the doctors were doing is pulling splinters out of you because, you know, you're crashing into a floor wow. that's made out of wood, right? Ooh. Yeah, so so if you go down, mm, you're going down hard. Yeah, you're going down hard. And and then of course, their their protective clothing was not nothing like what we have today. today yeah, It was a course. basic canvas jacket and and a leather helmet, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And so so the board racing was very popular. But at some point motor drums began, they got this weird name called murder drums. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were losing their lives there. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and then they moved to dirt because yeah. dirt don't hurt. I mean, yeah. it's much safer yep. to ride in dirt. And, and that's a true thing. The yeah. dirt does not hurt. Yeah. Right. But in dirt what happens is the rear starts sliding. Yep. And in many ways the origin of flat tracking came because from yeah, from because you can't place. really you can't really slide the motorcycle as much on on wood as mm-hmm. much as you can on a dirt track right so flat track origin i mean at least the origins of flat, flat track racing come from there and then there were these hill climbs and by god i'm not 
they're not small five degree inclines you know these were like serious inclines and it was not for the faint hearted and i've seen some images of the early day riders wearing barely nothing you know you're riding up the hill on one wheel the other wheels up in the air mm. and uh, i i even think that some some of them even had a cigarette in their mouth when they were going <laughs> out <laughs> i'm sure i've seen images on the internet yeah, where people yeah, are like oh just, okay yeah. we're so brave open I mean, face helmet you've got to yeah yeah um and then there were uh, endurance racing uh uh-huh. well be spanned over uh, multiple days you know you've got segments much like you know at least that's that's rallying of today was inspired by rallying or limo you want to yeah, call, yeah. call that yeah and and uh, then there were economy races you know how far can a gallon of gas take you uh-huh. um so all kinds of racing and every weekend you know monday to friday the, you know most people end up working somewhere on the weekends they're out there racing so the red category of motorcycling sort of originated from from this side and then you've got your black category the black category that came together here so in a nutshell this is the american side of uh, how the motorcycle, motorcycle riding started, culture yeah. originated but that's just one part of the story there's a lot more that happened across the world um the the british guys i mean i i've met tons of british motorcycle riders and i find them to be extremely interesting extremely loving extremely passionate people yeah and uh, from the conversations you know you understand where where, where does that come from yeah uh, in in the early uh, 60s and 50s 60s and 70s british motorcycles were also very very uh, ahead of its time you know they yeah. were fast they were very bikes. capable yeah, yeah very yeah. capable and they used to have something called um, the ton of boys have you heard about it no i haven't yeah so the cafe racing culture uh-huh. today cafe racers are you know everybody loves to talk about a cafe i've heard racer. this story yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very interesting one you should so, totally stay on and hear this out yeah so basically you take a regular motorcycle you get rid of what you don't want and put mm. a lovely cowl in the front um um the rear seat is not needed so you, so you get yourself a, a little short fender there um uh, and the trick is they'll come to one cafe put a few coins and get the jukebox to start mm-hmm. and the challenge would be who would take a spin around the neighborhood there would be a pre-planned lap and come back before the song gets over so you ride from ca- either that or you go from one cafe to, to another, another cafe yeah, yeah. within a certain amount of time so the term cafe race originated wow. from this and at that point of time motorcycles weren't as fast you know so you know I- I- every year somebody or the other would come and say that we've got a bike that can go 80 miles an hour or yeah. 90 miles an hour but nobody really cracked the 100 miles an hour and the 100 mile an hour is the ton yeah and um, so these guys these racers would would get their motorcycles they'll sub them up a bit and they will try to hit the ton and the ones who could do 100 miles an hour they earned the title ton of boys so so ah. it is a culture of hitting 100 miles Uh, or 160 kilometers that's awesome uh, on a motorcycle yeah and uh, again you have to understand why a lot of people took to it is back in the day motorcycling was a very cheap form of transportation uh that's that's why there were a lot of people who took to it today mm, premium motorcycles is not as uh, affordable as it used to be back in the day right. but there is a resurgence you would seeing a lot more smaller capacity motorcycles that are performing well yeah also i think back in the day there was no concept of having like a premium motorcycle or a small motorcycle it was yeah, a yeah. motorcycle it was a motorcycle correct just correct, a motorcycle correct, correct, correct. you had to live with yeah, it you had to live with it whatever. absolutely yeah. so so british motorcycles also played a big role uh, in 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 the culture right uh, and then a lot of these riding clubs which were popping up sort of started branching out to europe also yeah and um, you would see chapters of these riding clubs which would probably must have originated in the us right. uh, also having their chapters in across europe uh, the third country that i think that we should talk about is japan mm-hmm. japan's got a fabulous history in motorcycles again uh, you look at the world's leading motorcycle brands it's probably these three and may, maybe italy yeah. uh, these four countries that sort of leads it right yep. um and and japan also had a i'm not sure it's a dark past but they they had this group that was called the bosuzoko okay um you should check them out they were how do you spell that out b o s o z o k u bosuzoko check it out okay and they were just you should see those motorcycles i mean they were regular uh, parallel twins or uh, inline fours a single cylinder motorcycles not, not, nothing really great about the motorcycle they should put these really long forks in the front a massive cowl <laughs> extremely wonderful colors right and the rear seat was extended about 7 feet high in the air <laughs> okay so where was the rider sitting so you've got your seat and the pillion seat yeah the backrest of the pillion seat is sort of about 6 or 7 feet high okay and not a very pretty sight if you ask me but, <laughs> but there was 
every single motorcycle had that distinct look look yeah and in the peak of this culture there were about 40000 members in that club what yeah 40000 huge with the same kind of motorcycle same look and feel i mean of course there'll be little variations here and yeah. there but uh, more or less the same that was the design language yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah, japan yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, gosh just imagine a thousands of them riding down a street wow it, it would make you uncomfortable for sure yeah again but what makes one uncomfortable is inspiring another person 100% again so when you, when you see a might of force riding down on a public highway uh, when you go to bed that night a, a seed of desire to you know be out there and feel the power that's the same thing i mean you see a bunch of riders on a sunday morning i'm sure that if you see you know, 50 hog members riding uh, on a sunday morning in pune whoever sees that sight yeah uh, it's hard to say that they wouldn't want to be a part of it yeah because back i i remember when i had my first motorcycle the charisma yeah yeah and the charisma was not a big bike yeah, so to say yeah. yeah and when when i used to go to lanavla or mm. you know go on a sunday weekend ride i used to see these these big bikes going in groups yeah. and having breakfast and i was like damn man i wish i could be a part of that group so yeah. that's a true story yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah if there's something that makes you happy or gets a smile yeah. on your face yeah. you want to be a part of it and that continued till i got the cbr250r totally. finally got up totally. got to be a part of the group and i felt at that moment of time i was like this is the proudest moment of my life i mean this is what i have been imagining for the past 2 3 years and i'm finally getting to do it on a motorcycle going on a sunday with my friends having breakfast coming back people are looking for for me motorcycling back then was like ah i have a big motorcycle yeah. i like riding yeah. i'm going to just munch on miles <laughs> waste money on petrol yeah. and that that was what, what i felt back then it's an honest thing it's the same story right and you may not realize it the beauty of this conversation is you riding has inspired a lot of people 100%. without you even knowing it i'm sure you know there would be a 17 year old who would have seen you yeah. getting up kidding up and uh, would have fantasized that one day i need to be that guy 100% you know you, you at least i remember that every time i went to bed i had a few posters of motorcycles <laughs> i had everyone has it yeah exactly yeah. right because it it has to start because it i think it all comes back to that point that i said earlier that, that there race. is a desire yeah. to be to go fast yeah. and all through human history it exists um human beings if you, if you see we we got on horses we got on animals to get us faster at some point uh, the horses sort of faced out right and we got on to motorcycles uh tomorrow we'd find something else you know faster, we yeah, will something faster something faster always find a way to go faster it Absolutely. is inevitable yeah uh, and it's a great thing uh, when you also talk about moto gp yeah, yeah. it's not the same motorcycle every year right not it's, at all. It, it, they're doing some change yeah. they're br- trying to break the 300 barrier yeah, i mean yeah. back in the day yeah. they were trying to break the 300 barrier yeah, yeah. and the year after that they're chasing 320 yeah. these days they're doing 350 and it's always the the thing to go faster Correct. faster faster and Correct. and But sports these days are examples of that absolutely but well, you know the point that i think we should emphasize is that the same rider yeah has been riding the motorcycle that say 20 years ago would right. have been I don't know. Seventy percent of the capabilities yeah. of what it is. Hundred percent. Yeah. It just shows that the same person, twenty years later, can still tame it. That means the human body yeah. has a lot more yeah. that has not been explored. You know, yeah. we could push our body to to massive limits. Yeah. Uh, okay, keep speed on one side. You you look at people who do endurance racing. You know, seven days, ten days, maybe more, but you're still at it, not giving up. Yeah. You, you, so th- i think the human spirit is just unbelievable we haven't found our limit uh, we will keep striving and every generation coming ahead of us uh, would look back at us and say yeah, yeah. <laughs> these guys <laughs> yeah, they were they were so good fast. enough yeah. not so fast <laughs> um, and, and i hope i i don't think it'll ever stop yeah, it just shouldn't it's a good thought <laughs> yeah yeah so you were saying something about um, how racing took form and all of that the japanese guys yeah so so this group comes together but unfortunately off late you know motorcycles uh some people look back at motorcycling and they said i don't want to be this particular person i need to create my own identity but then that's that's the truth of of any product you know you have to keep improvising you have to keep looking towards to the future and um, actually some of the products that we've shown um, you know the the pan america or the bronx it is a massive leap as far as harley davidson is concerned and the feedback that i've got from members of um, you know the media the friends and you is like wow harley davidson's getting into a a segment that you guys were not there so evolution 
is is key, the, yeah. is key. You know, you will have to evolve. You, 100%. You can't just keep looking to your past. Uh, looking forward is is probably the most important thing. I still remember this great event that I attended and that was the flat track event at yeah. uh, John Singh yeah, Speedway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you were the first guys to actually do flat track at at, at that yeah, sp- yeah, at we, that space, but oh man, what yeah. a fun event! So flat track, um, so I just love that sport. Yeah, I love it too. Uh, yeah, but you know, for friends who are listening and do not aware of what this sport is, flat track is, in my opinion, the most grassroot level racing that you could do. Because what is it that you need? You need a patch of land. Uh, that you could put together uh, an oval that needs to be say about 300 meters or long uh, you need a motorcycle without a front brake and you <laughs> need a lot of courage yeah <laughs> uh, the beauty about riding a flat track motorcycle is because it is the fact that you could push the limits not of your motorcycle but of you as a person right because it is the on- the only re- only thing that could make you go fast around a flat track is your skill you could get a person to bring the most sophisticated motorcycle around but if he doesn't have the skill on a 100 cc motorcycle you could beat him yeah so one of the reasons i have that much respect for great flat track riders is because they could do things that a normal human being can't do yeah now if you think about tarmac tarmac is the most forgiving surface ever yeah. you know when you, when you're riding on tarmac you can feel everything the grip levels are amazingly high your motorcycle has the ability to get all the rider aids working together because these rider aids are designed for tarmac and you could literally see the tarmac doesn't lie if you see a flat road it is a flat road right dirt is unpredictable okay you, you will do one lap and the track feels in a certain way by the time you come on the second lap the la- the track could be completely different so because every dirt sport i feel yeah. I- is super challenging Absolutely. i mean on a race track you have lines yeah. you have got your braking yeah. markers yeah, yeah. you have yeah. got your turning markers you have got points which means if you're doing the same loop say 5 10 15 20 yeah. laps yeah. a day or whatever yeah. a session yeah. you know where to brake you yeah. know where to get on the gas you know where to look you know everything correct but in a dirt circuit yeah. be it rally and euro yeah. flat yeah. track as yeah. well i mean you don't have a specific point or, a or a reference marker right yeah, yeah. it's just changing every single absolutely, time i had absolutely. the privilege of attending dhaka 2020 yeah, yeah. and i saw riders pass by yeah. and um, i know they have the aid of navigation it's still right. analog yeah. but they still have the aid of navigation yeah. but if a rider passes by the surface that he's the next rider will ride on is going to be com- completely, completely different absolutely. and the rider after that completely absolutely. different absolutely and imagine if a truck or a car passes <laughs> you and then you're on a motorcycle yeah. riding so it's yeah. super super difficult yeah. and i think for me i yeah. think rallying or dakar the sport stands at the highest yeah. level of just being a very yeah. very courageous yeah. i mean people yeah. need balls of steel to actually participate yeah, in a sport yeah you like said that. it you said it and and that's the reason why if you see uh, you know legends such as uh, valentino rossi who yeah. trains on a flat track yeah. uh, you see marcus and vinales and uh, dovi doing a lot of motocross yeah the thing is it's a great place to train yes you're not afraid of the motorcycle sliding you yes. learn how to control the slide yep. and, and today's motor gp riders uh, they <laughs> they don't they don't turn the motorcycle the way they used to right yeah. i mean the, the rear is sliding you find your line and and you take it and so in many ways not only is this good for, and it's a great training aid because it's not an easy sport i mean i can tell you five five laps around a, a short flat track you probably need a break yeah. you know you could do 50 laps on a decent race track and yeah. come back feel okay but five laps on a flat track or any dirt track or any it's dirt track you come back and you're like oh, yeah. but it's it's a great workout yeah um and why i love the sport a lot more is the fact that your entry cost to the sport is also very nominal yeah uh, I mean you me we all know for the fact that you want to get a motorcycle and ride on a on a race track it's super expensive, expensive. yep uh, flat track it's an everybody sport you could yeah. in, anyone who's got any motorcycle a patch of land um, well there are different qualities of flat tracks but e- if you have a basic steamroller yeah. uh, and a patch of land uh, you and me can make a flat track yeah. and and that and it's like a golf course right um, there are they they say that no golf course is a bad course you you need to play against the course um similarly no flat track is a bla- bad flat track you need to learn how to crack that particular course yeah. uh, so the course that, i mean the flat track that we made at india bike week this time was of i mean in 2019 was a much more forgiving flat track but the one that we had in 2017 wasn't very easy to ride i mean the the you know 
every three laps there were massive ruts that were being formed you know and you get into one of those ruts you need Boom. to have the courage yeah. yeah, you need to cuz your your rear just gets completely stuck into it and you need to figure out a way to get out of it but that's also part of the challenge yeah whereas on 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 tarmac yeah the track does not change the track will remain the same track well i mean at a different level you know yeah you could say that there was a lot more rubber on the track or there's not yeah, for regular people like yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't matter yeah, it doesn't matter you know it, it'll it'll seem like the same track uh, over and over again yeah cuz i remember uh, doing the flat track session with you guys i yeah. think in 2018 if yeah. i'm not wrong and uh, there was a race between yeah. all of us friends yeah. and we were going around yeah. and i remember reaching the finals and by the time i reached the final stage yeah yeah the track was completely, <laughs> completely different. different yeah oh but by the way i mean since we with he's, he's the champion <laughs> he had the best time at uh, johnsing speedway yeah i, I won the uh, inaugural round yeah, yeah. and first time you were on a flat first track first time on right? a flat track yeah yeah so what you need to take away from the fact is uh, from this is the fact that it's also a level playing field it doesn't matter how good you are on tarmac but yeah. once you come to a flat track yeah. you are as good as the guy next to you yeah because i remember <laughs> going up against dilip lalwani in the finals and yeah. i was like shit man this this guy is fast ah oh, man this is not going to happen and and i was like oh fuck i won I yeah like, exactly oh, good, good exactly yeah. so so that's also the beauty of the sport that that you could get there and take on anybody it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. and if it's your day you'll go back as as champion yeah yeah but i distinctly remember you know the first thing that happens to first time flat trackers is you get on the motorcycle the minute you feel the rear slide you, you, grab, yeah. <laughs> you grab the front brake and then you're like where the yeah. hell is it and then you're trying to steer and all of that yeah it was yeah. fun though it was fun though but i i think i think one last question that i really want to ask you and and you're such an enthusiast in the way you talk is so passionate about yeah, motorcycles what is that one sport yeah. that is outside the country that you would want to happen in india oh yeah no, well right now ever since we did the hill climb and i think that needs to come yeah. uh, we we need to put together a really good uh, find a find a hill cut it uh, build a few um, harley davidsons uh, with with the right tires uh, maybe extend a bit of the wheelbase and uh, send it up as fast as we could and again anybody can do it you know we we are such a large country we don't we have no shortages of hills you know it, it doesn't have to be a very high hill it could be about 50 meters 100 meters yeah um time trials <sighs> I yeah, I mean the possibilities are yeah, the endless, possibilities right? Are intense, I mean. But that's the sport you would want in yes, India. Yes, 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 and um, motorcycles can't be used only for one activity. You know, it's such a versatile product. There's so much that one can do with it. Uh, I'd also like to think about large capacity motorcycles in economy races. Think, oh, uh, uh, that would be fun. There's a bit of humor in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, why not? You know, you find find. Nice I'll see you stretch. after 20 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, 6 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that should be yeah. fun. <laughs> your first gear, neutral weight, then no one's watching you use your legs to paddle a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> But get over the finish line as late as possible. Why not? Yeah. But you I you know I I remember seeing pictures of you on the track. Yeah. You've done flat track, you've yeah. done hill climb. What is your favorite sport of it? Or or of this all? A very difficult to answer that question, uh, Varun, because I I love motorcycles period. I I love everything that it can do um and i love the fact that on a sunday morning you you, you take a lovely harley davidson and you you find a winding road uh do a 3 hour ride where your mind just wanders you know let the, the motorcycle rides itself just enjoy it you know you feel one with the machine it's sort of a zen like state that you get into um you don't have to think about riding you don't have to think about where to point the bike you don't have to think about you're just free i also at the same time I'd like to be challenged. I'd like to get on a motorcycle that can scare you. Uh you have to be 100% focused. You're searching for your lines and you know that one mistake uh, not only can cost you, it could cost the motorcycle uh, and probably and someone else as well. Someone yeah. else as well. That's meditative too because you're so focused on it. Uh so I love both sides of it and I I love them equally. So it's very difficult for me to say um which particular sport would I like to have. Um but as people who are living in india at this point of time we're privileged to be part of brands we're privileged to be um, you're privileged to be in, in this side of the media yeah. i think it's our responsibility to bring multiple opportunities to fellow motorcyclists yeah uh, it's our responsibility it's a great responsibility and mm. we need to uh, if we don't do it nobody else will so yeah. uh, in many ways the, the fact that we got flat tracking to india is yeah. one thing uh, hill climb maybe next uh, maybe knows? next yeah and exactly why i think through the five and a half years that i've been doing this yeah. i never really got attached to one genre of motorcycling yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because this work allows me to experiment with yeah. all kinds of motorcycling yeah. events right yeah, it, yeah. be it on the track right. be it uh, uh, in doing a rally or maybe doing flat track maybe hill climb is next so i never really got attached to yeah. one kind of uh, genre and i think that gives me the space to evolve yeah. and adapt yeah. in every because every kind of motorcycling yeah, requires a different kind of input yeah you're lucky because every week you get to ride a different motorcycle <laughs> not, exactly. not not everybody yeah. has that privilege yeah. so and i can't apply the same principles that i apply on a track to yeah. dirt you can't of course and, and why so was i can't do that so i i think for me in the position that i am i, I am incredibly privileged and yeah. you know feel lucky to just be on every side of yeah. motorcycling that it has to offer yeah. and and that is so great about this job and and i absolutely love it wonderful and i've seen you ride you're a very capable rider respect to what the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he's 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 strong he's he's solid and uh, i think his basics are also very very well uh set <laughs> well, go to school you. right yeah, yeah of course school, yeah i mean right? i think the best place for someone to learn a specific art of motorcycling yeah. if they're interested in is to go to a school of course yeah no and and that school teaches you just to get better faster absolutely. safer absolutely and a school like your educational academic yeah, system yeah. this is also an educational yeah. academic yeah. system and yeah. absolutely yeah. go to school have you been to a school of course all kinds of schools i've been to flat track school i've been to motocross school i've been to um track schools and of course Harley Davidson has a riding academy that we do on on how to manage large capacity uh, we twins right um of course i never lose an opportunity to go to school yeah. because you know they at some point when you keep going back to school you might think i've learned it all right i mean what what is there to learn anymore but there'll always be that one instructor who would give you that little nugget yeah that will change your riding dude it it happened at See? css yeah. last year See? uh not last year last year yeah, august yeah. i i i usually go to schools being a noob yeah. i i just know how to operate the clutch get on the throttle yeah. stuff like that and i consider myself a fairly good rider and i got a level 4 coach at css yeah. right and this guy in the very first session points out 10 mistakes see and i'm like dude i need to learn so much more and that's that's the yeah. great thing yeah, yeah. you learn yeah. every time you yeah. go to a school if you go to the same school twice yeah. or thrice yeah. you'll still learn something yeah. I I agree and it's it's not just about riding a motorcycle that you learn you you learn a lot about motorcyclists right yes. so you should understand a group of people come to school they are there to learn but they also are there to share their experiences because the equal number of time equal amount of time that you're on a motorcycle you're off the motorcycle and some of these conversations are great life lessons you know people who come from different paths and that's that's the glue that keeps everybody together right and the very fact that you find somebody who rides a motorcycle you connect with them yes absolutely irrespective of what they ride <laughs> irrespective because the fact is it's a good conversation starter oh, uh, yeah. yeah motorcycle so i yeah. couldn't say it better it is a great conversation starter and uh, wherever you are in the world it doesn't it could be india it could be europe it could be uh, africa you name it uh, if he or she is on a motorcycle you can connect yeah on that note uh thank you so much for being on the show i love you man i you're so passionate it's always a pleasure talking to you i still remember a chat when we were in america there's so much to mm-hmm. learn from you if you want to learn something from vijay thomas you can pester him on instagram he's there as uh, vijay thomas or vm thomas something like that vijay thomas v <laughs> vijay yeah, yeah yeah so you can pester him drop him dms sure. if you want to learn something about motorcycles or just the history of motorcycling is something that if you want to listen to a story a bedtime story you can pester him on instagram but thank you so much man Bed, thank you for taking the time out bedtime story no any <laughs> other story <laughs> hey why are you pushing it a little <laughs> little too much yeah but thank you man thank you so much for being on the show it's always yeah, it's a been pleasure, pleasure talking it's to you and uh, great stories we should catch up again if you want to listen to some more stories let us know what you want to listen to we'll do a bit of research and uh, hopefully be back with vijay thomas on the show again uh, but thank you he leaves for ihr tomorrow which yes. is the india hog rally by yes. the time this podcast goes out the rally will be over everybody will be back home but uh, safe riding and uh, once again on a final ending note thank you so much you're listening to the power drift podcast any last words right safe right hard right safe right hard and uh, that's me signing off i'm boron painter and they know the drill man they know <laughs> they, they know the drill <laughs> well done. thank you cheers